Yo, what is up guys? It is Small back again with another Should You Pull Epic 7 video for you guys today. And today we're going to be talking about the two banners that are currently running on the current banner rotation. And that is going to be Ken the Fire Warrior as well as Ada the Ice Mage. Now we're also going to be talking about their artifacts respectively, Samsara Prayer Beads, as well as Twilight Calamity and if they're worth pulling for. Now starting off with Ken guys, he does have an interesting kit, kind of outdated in my opinion. I was kind of hoping he'd get buffed pretty soon. Soon, but Smilegate kind of doesn't really like this unit. He doesn't even have an exclusive equipment yet when he's not that great, but we'll talk about that in a second. Let's look at his skills really quick and talk about why, honestly, he's not that great of a unit. S3, guys, it is a single target attack that will decrease attack of the enemy for two turns and also stun for one turn as well as granting vigor buff for himself, which is the same as Conqueror Lys's vigor where you're getting attack and defense that cannot be dispelled. Now keep in mind this will cost you 80 fighting spirit and you'll start the battle with 50 fighting spirit and gain 5 fighting spirit when attacked and also some fighting spirit when you use your other skills. This damage will also scale to your own max HP so you're going to put him on a bruiser like build similar to like a Wen Xian Shu where you have crit chance, crit damage and a pretty high health pool. Next we have his S2, it is a single target defense break for 2 turns which will also give him a speed buff. And you'll also gain fighting spirit when he kills an enemy with this. When the caster is granted vigor this will ignore effect resist so the defense break will always land. And this will also give him that extra damage based off his max HP. And you can actually soul burn this for an extra turn. Now keep in mind, this is kind of weird because if this doesn't kill a unit guys, this actually doesn't give you fighting spirit. I don't know why, I think this should give you at least like, I don't know, 20 for an S2. Even if it doesn't kill a unit and double if you defeat an enemy with it and you get 40. Uh, but this doesn't give you any, it's kind of weird. It makes it kind of hard to build up the fighting spirit to actually get your S3 especially if you get ignored. Now his S1 does give you Fighting Spirit. It is a 15 Fighting Spirit gainer. It is a single target attack that has a chance of defense break and also will burn the enemy when you're granted Vigor and this damage dealt will scale with your max HP. Now burns scale with your attack. So it's kind of weird because it makes Ken in a situation where he's really hard to build because Alensi and Shu, who kind of have similar abilities where they scale with their max um, HP, especially for their damage, uh, they don't have to build that much attack. You can put them at 2k and it's fine. But with Ken, since he has a burn built in, you're kind of incentivized to actually build more attack, um, especially because you have that vigor buff to buff it even more. So for that reason, he's even harder to build because not only do you need the same stat guidelines as Alensi and Shu, but you also need attack on top of that to, to make use of his burns and his vigor, uh, which is just kind of weird in my opinion. It kind of makes him a lot harder to build and doesn't really you know, benefit your team or your account that much uh, for how much you have to invest into him. For that reason, I think he's not that great. PvE and PvP, guys, easy skip. This unit's not really used anywhere. You can use him in like Golem normal team, but there's a lot of units that can do Golem pretty easily. Now for his artifact, guys, you're gonna see it is when you attack with a single attack, you'll increase damage by 10%, and when you're attacked by a single attack, you will decrease damage suffered. Uh, this is okay, the only thing is, uh, there are better war warrior artifacts out there, especially for Ken. You can use like Draco Plate or Sacred Scythe, it's a lot better. Sacred Scythe is just a really strong warrior artifact, same with Draco Plate, so uh, for warrior artifacts to compete with those, it's really hard because a lot of warriors fill the same role, where they're just like bruiser units, and lifesteal on bruisers is very good, and extra damage and tankiness is good, uh, so there's no reason to take any artifact over that but this unit's okay you can use this on ken if you want to use him or any single target attacking warrior just keep in mind it's not the best option out there and now let's talk about ada the ice mage so ada is completely different than ken guys she's actually very very powerful for pvp still not gonna be really used in pve that much but for pvp especially cleavers out there she's really strong so looking at her skills S3 is an AoE attack with a chance to stun. We'll also see our push all of our allies up by 20%. And when an ally uses a non-attack skill and her S3 is available, so basically at the start of battle, she will actually push herself by 20%. So if you have like a Conqueror Lilius, if you have like a specialty change Jenna, if you have like a Pera or a Ran and they use their non-attack skill, uh, they will actually push up Ada by 20%. So you can build her decently fast and still have her cut the enemy openers as long as you have a unit that goes first and can use her S2. Next, we have her S2, and this is going to be an AoE attack that will strip two buffs before pushing back the enemy CR by 15% to 40%. It is random, but even if you roll the 15%, it's very good. So this makes her a very, very powerful uh, secondary opener if you can get her to actually get this combo off. So she'll also grant herself a skill nullifier once, and the combo I was talking about is the Soulburn effect. 
you have a Taga Hell's Ancient Book on her because she's a mage. She gets 20 souls for free. She can actually soul burn S2 after, after she gets pushed up. And then S3 right after to stun lock the enemy and also you know push up your allies as well. She can basically solo cleave the enemy team as long as she has someone that goes first before her. Very, very powerful for that reason. Next, we have her S1 single target attack with a chance to decrease defense. This doesn't really matter too much. Uh, basically, with Ada, you're winning in the first like few turns if you get her to actually S2 into her S3. And all you need to do to enable that is have someone to go first and put her on like 260, 270 speed, and you're good to go. So yeah, Ada's like a super powerful cleave unit, guys. If you're really into cleave and you really love to go first, then Ada is basically a must-pull. She's one of the best cleavers in the game right now, especially for PvP extremely powerful she does so much damage and the fact that she can actually uh, build high damage and still be able to take her turn because she has that s3 uh, cr push on herself when an ally uses a non-attack skill and can cr push herself and can stun lock the enemy and can strip enemy buffs and can push them back and she has skill no fire to last another turn it's just super super overloaded for a cleaving kit so for that reason if you're into cleaving she is a must pull for pve though like i said she's not that useful so if you're newer to the game and you're not really interested in pvp yet then she's probably not a good option for you. Next, we have Twilight Calamity. This is a mage exclusive artifact. Gives everyone crit chance and increases effectiveness of the caster by 15%. So this is good in like arena offense teams where you're running the same team over and over. Uh, but like I said, most mages have really good artifacts already. Talgal's Ancient Book, especially for Ada. And if you're using her in World Arena, where, she's the, where she is the best in, especially for cleavers, then this is not as great because you can't always guarantee that you'll get the maximum effect from the crit chance because most units you're building on 100% crit chance anyways, especially if you're cleaving, right? So it's really weird to actually use this on um, a cleave unit like Ada because of the fact that most units are going to be at, you know, high crit chance already. Effectiveness doesn't really matter on Ada. You're basically building her on high damage. Having effectiveness is a nice bonus, but mostly because of her damage, she's very good. She does crazy, crazy amounts of damage. So this artifact, I think this is an easy skip. Same with Samsara Prayer Beats, easy skip. So only thing worth pulling for or getting from these two banners is going to be Ada. Keep in mind, these banners will be running for a week. It will end on the 26th of January, and then we'll have new banners re replacing them. That being said, I hope this video helps you guys out, guys, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.